Hello, I'm Bruce Obiagale, Vice Chair of the ISC Program Committee. I'm here with Dr. Winstein to talk about her eye care study which she presented earlier today. So the eye care stands for the Interdisciplinary Comprehensive Arm Rehabilitation Evaluation. So it's a rehabilitation trial. It's one of only four phase three randomized clinical trials that have been conducted in this area. So it's relatively unique. It's also unique in that it was the first trial to examine people early after stroke onset. Uh, basically, people came in and they were randomized about 46 days after stroke when they were outpatients. Uh, also, uh, it was the first to use two control groups. We had a dose equivalent uh, usual and customary care occupational therapy group and a usual and customary care occupational, which they basically got what was prescribed. So those are the two control groups that we use to ask the dose question. Does dose uh, influence outcome and particularly motor performance outcome? The third group was our investigational intervention, and it was called the Accelerated Skill Acquisition Program. It emphasized skill acquisition, capacity building, and motivational enhancements, and was patient-centered, focused more on rehabilitating the person with the paretic arm instead of the paretic arm by itself. Now, was this just in the upper limb? It was the upper limb. I see. Correct. I see. So, but our outcome measures, so our primary outcome measures were motor performance uh, of the upper extremity. Our secondary outcomes measured more global things, nice. quality of life, reintegration into normal living, uh, and physical performance, including mobility. So the secondary outcomes got at some of these more global issues. Nice. So what we found uh, from the, the dose question, comparing the two, uh, the two control groups, is that dose had no effect on the uh, primary outcomes uh, at the one year time point, which is about 13 and a half months after stroke onset. And the usual care group got uh, only about 11 hours of therapy, and the other group got 30 hours of therapy. So it was more than a two-fold increase in the dose made no difference. So the comment, uh, more is better, not I think is, true is exactly needs to be modified. I see. The ingredients of therapy, comparing the ASAP with the dose equivalent group, uh, we also saw no differences at the one year uh, time point, but we did see uh, differences at, after therapy, mm. suggesting that the accelerated program, in fact, accelerated outcomes, secondary outcomes, uh, in terms of physical function quality of life and reintegration into normal living. Mm -hmm. Those group differences went away at the one year time point, but they were uh, prevalent post-therapy. So it wasn't sustainable? It was sustained. So the gains were sustained, but the group differences went away. Oh, I see. So I see. the other two groups caught up caught to, up. Absolutely. Um, but the I other see. group, the other group I just see. stayed. So, so the advantage wasn't sustained, but it, it was sustained, but they caught up. Now I understand. Right. So the, exactly. Right. And so if I may ask, why have there been so few trials in this area? They're very hard to do. Uh, and you know, you've got to coordinate a significant number of sites in order to get appropriate uh, ends. Uh, and you know, the logistics of trying to do something like this, particularly when uh, services are already provided, you've got to fit in with that. Uh, I think we're going to see more of them. Well, so that means congratulations on even get the, getting this to completion in the first place. <laughs> Thank you. What would be the next steps in this field? So the next step, so there is, uh, NINDS, you know, has put together something called StrokeNet, which is an infrastructure for being able to do large-scale trials. But even they are realizing that the phase three level may be premature oh, in this area. And so they are really promoting more phase one, phase twos. I and I think that is uh, important. I also think thinking about stroke as a chronic disease and dealing with these uh, more global issues is gonna be very, very important, especially things which are uh, in terms of motivation how do we uh, address people's fundamental psychological needs to be autonomous, to be competent, and to be socially related? Absolutely. These are important factors. Do you have any speculations as to why the dose didn't seem to make a difference in your study? 
It's a good question. Um, one issue that we're pursuing in secondary analysis is the spread uh, in the usual care group. We didn't control it. We just nice. looked at what they nice. got. And there was a huge range from 0 to 46 hours. Oh. The average was 11. Okay. The confidence intervals were relatively small. Mm -hmm. So, But I, I'm wondering what's going to happen when we separate and we look at the low end. Right separated from the higher end and see if, if, if there is. I mean, it, it's, it was surprising to us, but it may be telling us something. Now, the other important point about this is the group was a very select group of people with motor strokes mm. and uh, with no uh, sensory or cognitive, limited sensory or cognitive impairments. So this is a select group, NIH stroke scale 3.6. So they're motor strokes only. Uh, and they're on a trajectory for recovery. So everybody improved 46% on our you know, motor performance and 70% met our efficacy for the cis hand function. But the issue is, uh, is did, could the dose have done any more? And we didn't find that Apparently it did. Not. Yes. Not. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Thank Winston. you. Thank you very much. Such a great study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Science News. Thank you.